Zen is martiality. Martiality is Zen. No fear. No inhibition. It transcends self and otherness. I like things that are exciting, fast, and powerful. I like free fighting in martial arts because it's very fast. The fights often don't last more than a minute, but in that minute, you have to win. And that to me is very exciting. Howard grew up in the USA. He came back to Hong Kong in 2007. When he was in the States, he served in the Air Force for a year and received combat training. What I learned in military school was supposed to be used on the battlefield. The training was very straightforward, and there was only one rule. It doesn't matter how you do it. You have to overpower, subdue, and get rid of your enemy. So when I started to learn Kung Fu, I started off believing that the most important thing is to win. Otherwise, Kung Fu has no meaning. Howard believes in speed and power. He's now learning Thai boxing to make himself a better fighter. Thai boxing also focuses on speed and power. When you watch those guys fight on TV, the boxers move so fast in the ring. They punch and kick fast, too. Actually, a real fight is even faster than on TV. Before you're even aware of it, you've already been punched. I'm an aggressive person. When I do free fighting, I always want to beat my opponent as fast as possible and get him down right then and there. That's the way I work. You've got to be fast. When I lived in the U.S., my knowledge of Kung Fu only came from the movies. Kung Fu fighters in films are fierce guys, and a small Kung Fu fighter can beat a giant. I often wondered, was that just cinematic fantasy or was it real? When I came back to Hong Kong, I decided I wanted to learn more about Kung Fu, especially Shaolin Kung Fu. I was told that Shaolin was the place where Kung Fu originated. Shaolin Kung Fu embodies a core concept of Buddhism, something called the martial arts of Zen. But as a beginner, there's no way I can just pick up the essence of such a complex thing right away. These things take time. To find the essence of Shaolin Kung Fu, I need to go to its source, the Shaolin Monastery. Tell me how many martial arts schools there are in Dunfang? Over 70. Over 70? The population of Dunfang is about 650,000. 
Many people here practice martial arts, especially Shaolin Kung Fu. Dongfang is a famous Shaolin Kung Fu town, and there are a whole lot of martial arts schools here. So a lot of people come here to learn martial arts. Many come from overseas. I've been observing some classes at the schools and talking to the teachers. They tell me that most of the students here have come to take courses so they can pass their national examinations and obtain a qualification to perform. As all the martial arts schools are regulated by the National Sports Bureau, the purpose of most of the martial arts schools here is not teaching people how to fight, but how to take the exam and perform. Thus, the combinations of punches and kicks are meticulously choreographed. The teachers told me that if I wanted to learn how to fight, then I should learn free fighting. Free fighting is similar to Thai boxing or mixed martial arts, but in combat, boxing gloves have to be worn. The gloves make it difficult to bring the special characteristics and the power of Chinese Kung Fu to life. The first impression I get of this place is that it's full of urbanization and tourism. How do the monks in the monasteries find the peace to practice in such a noisy environment? I want to go into the Shaolin Monastery to try and find traditional Shaolin Kung Fu culture. at Shaoxi Hill in Hunan province is thought to have been built in 495 AD by Indian monk Bada. Master Bodhidharma came to China in North Wei period. He taught Buddhism at Shaolin Monastery and established the school of Zen Buddhism. Shaolin has since championed Zen Buddhism and practiced a uniquely different Kung Fu. Shaolin Kung Fu embodies Zen Buddhism. What I want to find out in the Shaolin Monastery is how they integrate Kung Fu and Zen Buddhism. This is the greatest obstacle I have to learning Shaolin Kung Fu. Other martial arts like boxing and Thai boxing are totally different from Shaolin Kung Fu. Shaolin stresses the integration of mind and body. But this sounds very abstract to me. When I stand in the boxing ring, I always have to push myself and remind myself not to give up. But the thing about that is, Shaolin places a lot of importance on the selfless existence. So, my big question is this. Where do these guys find the drive to fight? I don't know how they can teach Kung Fu when their philosophy is so selfless. This is really confusing to me. Shaolin Kung Fu is very sophisticated. There are several hundred kinds of combat skills. Hard and soft combat, external and internal power. Unfortunately, most written records were lost. Shaolin Kung Fu has many categories, such as punching, pushing, grasping, interlocking, and the use of swords, blades, sticks, rods, etc.
According to stories of Shaolin Monastery, Shaolin Kung Fu was evolved 1500 years ago. Bodhidharma, after meditating for nine years in order to help his followers meditate and be healthy and strong at the same time, he taught the exercises tendon changing and marrow washing. In early Song Dynasty, it was said that monk Fuju invited Kung Fu masters from 18 major schools to study and teach at Shaolin Monastery for three years. As a result, Shaolin Kung Fu was fully developed. In the golden days of Shaolin Monastery, the Shaolin monks joined the army to protect the country from foreign invasion. However, from the beginning of Qing Dynasty through to the Cultural Revolution, Shaolin Monastery was suppressed and damaged. The martial arts culture of Shaolin was on the verge of extinction. One, two, three, go! Good! So far, I've noticed that the basic training these guys do, like high kicks and somersaults and so on, isn't much different from other kung fu training I've seen. These guys are basically training for strength and responsiveness. Judging from these training exercises, and I haven't seen much of them yet, but I still don't see how they can integrate their minds and their bodies. They also gave me a kung fu demonstration. Their emphasis on choreographed sequences is similar to the other schools. But these guys are probably more authentic and more disciplined. The sequences are beautiful, and they're pretty overwhelming. And I'm sure that audiences would love to see this stuff being performed. But I have another question. How can they apply these moves in a real fight? They use such big movements, which will surely expose their weaknesses to their enemies pretty quickly. Advance. Follow me. Grasp and lock the throat. Yes. We call this the leopard. And twin peaks over the ears. Due to market demand, the Shaolin Kung Fu we see these days is mostly for performance. It is very watchable and entertaining. Its practicality, however, is always being questioned. I went into a temple in the Shaolin Monastery. When Kung Fu was banned by the Imperial Court, the monks practiced a kind of Kung Fu there called Shin Ba, or Mind Consciousness Grip. As a result of their practicing, pits actually got smashed into the bricks laid on the ground. I think the Shin Ba must be very powerful. I want to find out more about it, but I've been told that it's almost disappeared, and that it won't be easy to find anyone still practicing it. Shaolin martial arts are very profound. It's a piece of treasure being passed on from one generation to another generation. Will Shaolin Kung Fu in this generation follow the changing times or fade away in history? several rounds of visits, Howard was told that the person who's still practicing it lived deep in the heart of Songshan, in a place called San Huang Jai. San Huang Jai Temple is on top of Songshan the old living quarters of Shaolin Monastery. The temple, after recent renovation, is run by Shaolin monk Shi De Jian. Originally known as Ding Hong Ben, 
Shida Jian is from Heilongjiang in the northeast. He grew up in a very poor family. To improve his well-being, he learned Kung Fu when he was a teenager. Attracted by Shaolin's reputation, he came to Shaolin Monastery in 1982. It's not easy to be admitted to Shaolin Monastery. I had a strong background in Kung Fu, but I still needed to try for a number of years and endure a lot of hardship and difficulties before I finally found my mentor, Master Sing Shing, in 1988. Master Sing Shing was the 17th generation successor of Yonghua Medical Hall at Shaolin Monastery. Shida Jian studied under Master Sing Shing and became his successor. Kung Fu was not the first thing he taught me. No, he taught me that it is more important to learn to be a good person. Learn to be a good person, then learn to be a doctor. When we learn Kung Fu, we learn about life first. We live. Then we understand what Kung Fu is about. Through martial arts, we learn about Zen Buddhism. One does not talk about Zen. It is meant to be understood. Through practice, we cleanse our minds. Then we practice further and understand more. One cannot practice before one's mind is calm. When I watch Shida Jian practice, I realize this practice is a lifelong pursuit for him. He practices alone on the top of a big rocky outcrop. It's so high that it would terrify most people. Yet he was very calm. He leaves his worries behind when he practices. Life or death, success or failure, none of it matters to him. This is what's important. When you have nothing to worry about, you learn to progress very quickly. Because there is no doubt in your heart. If you want to punch, then you punch. If you need to duck, then you duck. There's no hesitation at all. In order to practice in tranquility, in 1993, Shida Jian lived in San Huangjai in seclusion. He has been renovating the temple. San Huangjai temple was destroyed and deserted. My master asked me to renovate it. This is a very special task for me, because I am preparing the temple for people who are meant to be here, or for people who need it as a spiritual home. It is a place for them to practice. What is the highest state of mind in Shaolin Kung Fu? I say it is not to hurt yourself, not to hurt others. Learn how to save yourself and learn how to help others. This is the highest state of mind in my opinion. Shida Jian has six protégés at San Huang Jai. They followed him to practice on the mountain. They themselves are Kung Fu masters, respectively. Shaolin martial medicine embodies the spirit of Zen, and I practice by following this spirit. Many people practice Kung Fu without realizing it. You see, Kung Fu is not about just using your body to fight. This is the lowest level of practice. The highest level is the spirit, using your spirit to win over your opponent, to teach them and to change your opponent. This is the quintessence of Chinese martial arts. No, faster. Hit faster. Now try it. If you kneel down now, I'll break your leg. And if I pull this with my hand, your elbow joint will fracture. You see? We always practice using both hands and both legs. <laughs> Li Yuanjie has practiced Kung Fu since he was young. His sister sought medical treatment here in 2002. She was seriously ill, but she was cured at last. Impressed by Shida Jin's martial spirit, 
Li thus left his work and family behind and followed him on the mountain. You're still punching too slowly. When I learned Kung Fu and other places, I was taught to fight aggressively. I also learned boxing and free fighting. But without the support of the martial spirit, I became a man with a violent temper. This approach is totally different. When I practiced hard combat, I sometimes crack my bones and joints. Look at my fist. See how it's red? When I came here to learn hard combat, I was already suffering from periostitis and inflammation here. When Master found this out, he cured it. Then he taught me that the essence of martial arts was not about external things, it's about your mind and your spirit. Zen martiality is found in nature and in our everyday life. We practice Kung Fu in our everyday lives. When we walk, live, sit or sleep. When we work in the fields or walk up hills, we are always practicing. And Qi is the energy of life. This needs to be nourished well before we practice our combat skills. Through constant practice, we can find one approach that commands all our skills. This is the ancient practice of martial arts. We go step by step. Every step is practical and essential. Working in a field is one of these steps. You shift your body's balance. When you go forward, the front leg is your supporting leg. You see? Yes. When you squat, you move forward and backward. But the back leg supports you, not the front leg. You move forward and backward. Forward and backward. Like that. And that's how you practice while you work. I understand. Now try it, okay. Good. The front leg and the back leg. Go down, further down, that's right. Now straighten your waist. Like this? That's right, good. So was Kung Fu created in a field like this, do you think? Yes. Shaolin monks in the past practiced while they worked. Oh. While they worked the field, they integrated their practice into their work. It was like Zen farming practice. Mm. What's that thing for? Imagine I'm plowing the field without using a hoe. Look at the way my hands move. And my body is moving forward. Oh, I see. If I did that to you, I would crush you. But that combat skill, we don't use it in fights. You don't? No, it's too powerful and can hurt people. Chinese martial arts are very versatile. First, you have to practice all the time. Second, you have to learn how to respond. Attack me. Yeah, you see how my punch is yeah, faster than yours? Much faster. My body responds as you attack and allows me to attack you. Try one more time. Attack me. You see that? There. Uh -huh. And again. See? The legs and arms follow the body's movement. They're synchronized. I'll show you again. Attack me. Like that. You understand? Right. The legs and arms follow the body. We don't use any superfluous movement in our training. 
We practice until we understand the principle. This training helps to synchronize the arms, eyes, body and footsteps along a line. Pay attention to the details, duck and grasp, defend and attack, not just with a part of your body, use every part of your body. The movements can change, but the principle cannot. It doesn't necessarily look good, but it's very practical. Look into your opponent's eyes. You will be able to see his thoughts and where he is going. As soon as his eyes move, I am already responding. You need to practice how to use your eyes. When you fight, if you don't look into your opponent's eyes, then you will be attacked. Zen is martiality. Martiality is Zen. Shaolin Kung Fu integrates Zen and martiality. Zen is a natural existence. It transcends the self. You practice it with a very calm mind. The mind and the energy become one. Transcend from yourself into the realm of Zen. Practice in seclusion is called Xing Yi Zen. It is more than just meditation. Inset meditation, pile practice, combat, and even working in the field, you practice until your qi takes control. Nourish, manage, and circulate your qi until there's nothing to obstruct your qi. Let it reach every part of your body. You must nourish your chi before you practice. Only when you find your chi can you practice. Like a ball, chi is full of elasticity. Like a string, it can be wrung or twisted. It has spiral energy, you see? Watch, move your hip like this, do you see? Right. When you move one side, the other side will follow. It's just like a string being twisted. It gets tighter and tighter. Little Master showed us how to practice on piles. His legs kept moving forwards and backwards, shifting between fullness and emptiness. In regular terms, we'd call it a shift of balance. One leg is the supporting leg, the other leg doesn't take any weight. This is the empty leg. Why are they shifting all the time? Because they're not just practicing how to stand still on stationary piles. You don't just stand there and get attacked. You have to move around constantly, but still maintain your balance. You're twisting all the time, like wringing out a towel. You twist to release the explosive power. Why does Shaolin Kung Fu emphasize synchronized movement along a line? We practice moving left and right, up and down, forward and backwards. It doesn't matter how much space you have. You adjust according to the size of the space. In smaller spaces, your energy is more contained. You practice in order to gather the energy of your whole body, then you have the energy. So in larger spaces, or when you need it, the energy that you have gathered in your body can be released. The speed of the movement is like happiness and sadness in life. Happy movements are fast, but they disappear quickly. In the blink of an eye, In order to have happiness, 
you must endure a long, hard process. Gao Qianyong is a senior among the protégés. Shi Jian once intended to make him his successor, yet he couldn't resist the temptation outside and left San Huangjai. A master fighter, he made enemies with many people, and his enemies took revenge on his family. There was nothing I could do. They, they had guns and choppers. They attacked my mother with one. They cut her neck and her forehead, wounded her here. They attacked me too, so I had no choice. Or rather, I couldn't think of any other choices. My martial spirit simply wasn't strong enough. If it was stronger, then I wouldn't have hurt him or myself. Hurting others is the same as hurting yourself. When I had that mishap, at the time I felt that my spirit fled my body. But I was saved by my master's energy, and I was fortunate enough to be able to come back, and my master accepted me. What I've been through is hard to describe. It feels like I've been reborn. There's no use to regret. You must repent and redeem yourself. Repent for what you've done wrong. Then redeem yourself and prevent yourself from doing it again. Turn a new page and leave your past behind. It is essential to keep your mind calm and undisturbed. Life here is very simple and very basic. To most people from the city, including myself, life here seems very hard. You have to leave everything behind and live a lonely life here. I might be able to live like this for a week, but not three years, or ten or even twenty years. I probably can't keep going like this. It takes huge determination and commitment to come here and learn martial arts. Anything with a form will vanish like a dream. If you only pursue the skills, you will never understand the foundation, and you will have no energy to fight. You have to be clear about the purpose of Kung Fu. It is not for hurting people. Shaolin Kung Fu's purpose is to practice. It is for your well-being. You practice, you suffer, you steal yourself. You live a better life and then you become a better person. We integrate Zen, martiality and medical care. Like Shaolin Kung Fu, 
their practice embodies Zen and martiality via decades of medical practices. This integral approach is unique. It stresses mind adjustment and self-improvement. Prepare the mind to master highest martial spirit. Master martial arts in Zen. Understand medicine via martial arts practice. Does practice with your mind train you to be more powerful? Yes. Practicing with your mind will give you power. Power you can use in combat. This is what's so unique about Shaolin Kung Fu. It regulates the mind and your thoughts, and it regulates the power in your body. Another protege of Shida Jian, Agnes Chen, is a psychology professor in a university, researching Zen martial medicine. She collects useful data to analyze the relationship between qi and power. By observing practice sessions, we learn about circulation, about the connection between muscles and bones. Traditional Chinese Kung Fu stresses practicing with your mind. It's commonly called internal power. What is internal power? My understanding is that it's the elevation of internal strength and energy. When this energy is improved, health improves. When that energy is high, it has an effect like so. One can punch more powerfully. We practice on the mind and the consciousness to optimize our physical condition. This is what we call Xinyiba. Through incessant practice, our physiques are tuned to their uppermost limits. And when your condition is optimized, you can practice almost any combat skill. Any individual combat skill you care to name. It's quite an incredible thing. Live a celibate life and become a vegetarian. Vegetables are easier to digest. Remember, sheep and cattle are fed on grass, yet they have incredible stamina. Meat gives you the power of meat, but grass gives you the power of nature. So it's better to be a vegetarian when you're practicing? Definitely, to smooth the chi. If you have a mixed diet, then you'll complicate your digestion. The internal and external cannot be synchronized. Where will you find the energy? We eat too many dead animal bodies. When we took their lives, what kind of condition were they in? Angry. For people like us who practice seriously, we don't eat meat. For them, the enemies aren't outside. The worst enemies are themselves. They follow the codes of practice to subdue the evil within themselves. The more we practice, the happier we become. If we become bad-tempered or ill from practicing, what would be the point of it? That isn't martial arts. Remember, you practice nothingness. My level of Kung Fu is much too low to fight with the master. So, I invited Mr. Lee Ka to come up from Hong Kong to fight him instead. Lee Ka is a martial arts fanatic. He has learned from different Kung Fu schools and taken part in many combats. Shida Jian doesn't usually allow his protégés to combat with others. Yet, to demonstrate the practicality of Shaolin Kung Fu, he agrees to let four of them combat with Li Ka.
I used to be disillusioned by Shaolin Kung Fu. To me, it was just a bunch of choreographed kicks and somersaults. But this time around, it was totally different. This time around, I encountered authentic and traditional Shaolin Kung Fu. And I have to say, my faith has been restored by what I saw. It's so different from what I've seen before. And it's very different from other modern martial arts combat skills as well. Totally. It really demonstrates the essence of Chinese Kung Fu. It's full of possibilities and rich in styles. I'm so happy I got to watch the fight. I've never seen a real Chinese Kung Fu fight before. Now I understand how Chinese Kung Fu and Western free fighting are so completely different from each other. There is no definite form. The movement flows as though there are no rules whatsoever. Roll and go up. Roll and go in. Let your whole body roll in and out. A mouse can be a tiger. Shaped like a dragon. This is for building stamina and nourishing the chi. If you're out of breath, what's the point? You don't want to hurt yourself. Practice with your mind. To learn Kung Fu, you must practice with your mind, not with your arms and legs. Open yourself to your heart. Practice in calmness. The more we practice, the happier we are. Shaolin Kung Fu is the pinnacle of Chinese culture. I am a monk at Shaolin Monastery. I am also a disciple of Shaolin Monastery. I endeavor to promote Zen martiality medicine so that more people can benefit from it. More people's lives will be improved by it. This is the wish of a monk. Practicing martial arts is a learning process. But not many people realize that. Not many at all. I'd be really sad if this tradition was lost. Because this is traditional Chinese culture. I would like Shaolin Kung Fu to reach more people. This would make me happy.